The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And yet, markets basically flat across the board right now. Some decent earnings last night in both directions this morning as well. Salesforce trading lower, Macy's trading lower by about 10% right now on their forecast. We got the market flat to the tick in the S&P right now, trading flat at 41.90. NASDAQ 100 negative by three points right now. You're going to have Salesforce hitting the Dow especially as well as others, but Dow off 100 points. That's three-tenths percent in the red. You actually have the Russell positive after quite a day to the downside yesterday. Look at the volatility in the Russell, man. Down to 1738, up to 1760. We're back to almost flat in the Russell at 1753. Crude, 67.99. As we hit $67 yesterday almost on the dot, we're trading at $67.94, down 16 ticks. You got gold up $5 at $19.88. You jump over to the dollar index. <clears throat> and there's some action for you, man. Going to be interesting to see how this plays out today. We have a weaker dollar. We have jobless claims in this morning. We'll get over to those in a moment. But you got a weaker dollar under 104 to 103.99. You jump over the 10-year right now. 10-year yield climbing higher to 114. Excuse me, climbing lower, higher price, lower yield. Okay, 114.24 right now. You're up by nine ticks in the 10-year. You jump over to the 30-year, up by 22 ticks. So what do we have? We have lower yield. We have a weaker dollar. And yeah, you got to jump around to some of these numbers in particular. Salesforce down $15. You see the volatility on their numbers. Right now we're trading at 208. You closed yesterday at 223. You jump over to Macy's, clawing back some of those losses. So not as bad as things seemed at first glance on their numbers. You were down to 1152. Right now we're trading at 1310 from 1359. So is that down four or five percent? Uh, clawing back. Yeah, more than a buck fifty from that spike low on those numbers. Looks like the conference call going fairly well that began at about what time? Seven, eight o'clock this morning. They were trading under about twelve fifty. We're at thirteen fourteen. But people aren't spending the way they thought they were, at least not at Macy's as of now. And what else do we have? We have a debt limit deal that passes the House. Seems like it's all but sure that it will pass the Senate. Just a matter of time when. Friday in discussion. That would be January second. Ahead of when? Ahead of Monday when the Fed runs out of money. Pretty interesting, right? You get things done on Friday by a Monday deadline, and what are you talking about? You're talking about a deadline to keep the government running. Cutting it that close, folks, doesn't mean it's going to be uh, – it always doesn't go as well as it went there. Let's put it that way, especially when you really could have had one of the members of the Republican House just because the power they have, not even partisan, right? Same thing could be said on Democratic side if they were the ones who held the House, held the speakership, and allowed any individual member – to have a revote on the speaker and it didn't happen it looks like it's going to get done it goes to the senate it'll go to the president that will get done and that will get pushed back through the presidential election cycle which is probably a good thing overall that that doesn't come into focus during that time okay where are we going to jump to Macy's retail spending slows. Department store owner cuts the full year forecast, plans to increase promotions to clear out spring merchandise. So if you want some sales, maybe keep Macy's on your radar. Cut its full year outlook on sales and profits. Net sales totaled $5 billion in the quarter they just reported. That's down 7%. Net income falling 46%, okay, to $155 million. Yeah, they talk about Nordstrom in here as well. Where's the outlook? Because the outlook was the dire part here. They shaved about a billion dollars off of their outlook, man. All right, I'll have to pull it up. Surprised they don't have it right there. I was reading a different article this morning. So it's merchandise inventory down 7% from the prior year and down 16% compared to 2019. Pockets of strength in retailing, mall and shopping center operators say leasing activity is robust and rents are still growing. Yeah, but not the same in terms of there, in terms of Macy's, man. Let's 
Let's see what that links us to. Now yeah, that's a retail sales story. Okay, I'll pull up their numbers in a moment, but tough go around for Macy's, man. We'll see where they go, but they did. They shaved about a billion dollars off on terms of their revenue outlook, which is a tough one, man. Uh, Going to be an interesting day. Now, we got a lot of Fed speak in focus yesterday, right? And pretty interesting how the day went. In terms of the signal for a rate pause takes pressure off the hot jobs report, you got vice chair nominee being about as clear as you can be, man, saying Philip Jefferson, he's nominated to be the vice chair. Usually he will be in step with the chair in terms of Jerome Powell. And, yeah, people out there saying it's a signal. And, boy, it's tough to say anything other than that, folks. And I don't know how they do it, man. We got we got some data that's coming down the line before that meeting, okay? The meeting's two weeks from yesterday. So anything can happen. The jobs report could be a big surprise. But hearing those comments really seem to de-emphasize some of that data. If the data comes in line, they may just take a meeting off. Not the end of the world, but pretty surprising considering where the numbers are in inflation. You don't see people talking about the potential path towards 2% is on the radar right now without a little hope packaged in there as well. And you had the probability of a hike yesterday, about 60 to 70% before Jefferson started talking. And that number now, like 30 to, yeah, 35%. They put it right here. A hike, about one out of three from almost a two out of three. That's quite a change, man. And I would, uh, I would heed that. Because it's surprising, but I don't think you'd have the vice chair nominee out there being so forthcoming with the idea of a pause or a skip. And what he was saying is that skipping a rate hike at a coming meeting would allow the committee to see more data before making decisions about the extent of additional policy firming. They just want to give it a meeting off. If that's their case, I understand. But boy, you, you look at the core CPI, man. And it seems like we really need to get things under control. And what's what's the risk here in terms of a market that's sitting at 4,200? The biggest companies in the world challenging all-time highs, basically. And the NASDAQ 100 up like 30% for the year. The jobs number tomorrow is supposed to show 200,000 jobs added with an unemployment rate of about 3.5%. Very tough to stomach how they, they're going to potentially pause. But with those power, those comments yesterday, I would heed that. Now, here's the second part of this, though. OK, the market has moved past the Fed to a certain degree. Things are changing, but you do not see the reactions that we were so accustomed to for most of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. But as we've moved into 2023, the market is aware that we are near the end of that cycle, man. And it has stretched far longer than many anticipated, which is why we got so much volatility around those consistent hot inflation numbers for the better part of 2022. But right now they know. And maybe that's why that the Fed is going to pause, because the market's right, that they know that they are near the end of that cycle. But you know what they're focused on now, man? They're focusing on earnings. And outside of the big tech dogs, man, you know, you look at the performance of a company like Salesforce that's going to dive $15 on the open. Granted, this thing is up dramatically, one of the best performers for the year so far. You started 2023 off $130. You're still going to be about 208 But we got a little bit of weakness. We're going to talk uh, to our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Network. When we come back, folks, stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps basically flat right now, trading at 41.91. We got the Dow off 102 points right now, NASDAQ 100 barely in the green. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market with your hosts, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the outstanding team at the TD Ameritrade Network. They got some great guests over there. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. They usually have three trades a program, all of them using options, all of them using defined risk, Please check out the program. Kevin Hanks, are we going to get uh, a pause coming up? Things change very quickly in the last 24 hours. Good morning. Don't say pause, Tommy. Say skip. Remember, words matter in this environment because skip means they're not done. Pause might be taken by the market as being done, and the Fed doesn't want that. So if it does, and the in all reality, the CME FedWatch tool that is all over the board lately dropped significantly yesterday when Patrick Harker made some comments about a skip. Uh, Philip Jefferson, the Fed governor, made uh, some uh, comments about a skip, and they're choosing their words very carefully, Tommy. They're not saying pause. They're saying skip. The market, we'll see how that, it takes it, but suddenly, very quickly, the odds of a Fed raising rates has dropped significantly down to around 30 percent right before it came on the air. So, yeah, things are getting interesting here in terms of a Fed meeting now 13 days away. And what did you think? So what I found so interesting, and, and I hear you, those words matter. They kind of not caught me off guard, but I found them profound in that, just like you're saying, they chose them and they were pretty strong words. And maybe that is a, a skip. The inflation numbers are pretty hot, man. Unemployment's at 3.5%. We got an ADP number that's pretty hot. So, you know, trying to balance those out. But, boy, we had 10 consecutive hikes, so you could make that reasonable case. What did you think of the market reaction, Kevin? Because not really a huge reaction for what could be a pretty substantial change in how the market was anticipating. Either we get a hike or not in less than two weeks. Yeah, we had some movement, but all things considered – not the type of movements we've been accustomed to on some market-moving comments from the Fed in, in prior days, prior weeks, prior months, as we back it up a little bit. Listen, Tommy, I, I think the, the market, and especially the bond market, is trying to figure out what all this means. And what I mean is some of the data, like labor data, is coming in strong. But this move in crude oil, this move in natural gas, 
these move in some of the com- these commodities, that's disinflationary. Let's face it. I mean, crude oil was one of the main drivers when inflation, you know, went off the leash and went to high levels. It was energy, and energy has come significantly lower because of potential policies coming out of this debt ceiling. So I think with those under pressure, that takes some of the inflation risk out of this market. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of things going on here, uh, Tommy, that the market's trying to figure out. But all everything the Fed speakers have been saying this week has a lot, you know, it can all change with a stronger than expected payroll number and wages data tomorrow morning, Tommy. The number one data point of the month is coming out about 24 hours from right now. And so it's that's going to be significant. They, they need to see wages start to um, come down, not just plateau here, or in some cases, like last month, go up, Tommy. Yeah, I found it interesting in the same way, those words coming ahead of such important economic data. What happened to being data dependent? We're hearing some pretty strong conviction on both sides, like you say, with some pretty important economic data to come down the pipeline. We kick the day off. We're almost at about 4,200. We have some Dow weakness. You got Salesforce trading a little bit lower. That's going to put a hurt on that. Some other equities, <clears throat> excuse me, out with their numbers already this morning and last night. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin? Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Lululemon. That'll, that's always a fun conversation to have. And then we'll trade the other two big names coming out with earnings after the bell today. Zscaler, the cybersecurity company, and Broadcom, the semiconductor stock. So three big names today. The high pro t- profile one, clearly Lululemon. You know, it's interesting. You've got Macy's down pre-market, but you've got Nordstrom slightly higher pre-market. So kind of a mixed bag there in terms of retail for apparel. Let's see how that uh, moves over when we get Lululemon after the bell today, Tommy. And Broadcom, man, I pull I pull the chart up on the Thinkorswim platform as you're talking about it. You talk about slightly parabolic, maybe, and those are my words, folks. But we're trading at about 600 bucks until the craze begins, up to 921, and just like that, we're back to 800 right now. Uh, give us a teaser, maybe, uh, of Broadcom, Kevin, because we've seen the run in these stocks. AI is going to change everything. We know it. But as you guys put on the program when you were talking about AMD, I believe, early in the week, are they great companies? Of course they are. Does that mean the stock's going to go up? Of course it doesn't. Uh, Broadcom up at 807. It was trading at 700. It was trading at 600, not more than four or five days ago. What, what do you think of Broadcom as a teaser to what you guys will be talking about today? Yeah, the, yeah, the, you know, the chart in Broadcom, it, it's pretty significant. And clearly by their chart action or their price action that hit 900, you know, I mean, you, to look at it, it's, it's actually insane what, what, what's going on with this name. So a uh, lot of volatility in these names. You yeah. know, they're late in earnings season, so a lot of the news has come out. They've been riding the wave of, of AI. So, Tommy, I don't know what this thing's going to do. I mean, it, it's pretty The it's impossible pretty question. I hear you, when, man. When you look at it. Uh, and, and on the Thinkorswim platform, folks, uh, coming in, we got a $71 move. Uh, for an $800 stock. And yeah, it's moving $71 every every day, it seems like right now. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning, man. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock. We don't talk to you tomorrow, so we'll talk to you on Tuesday. And boy, uh, it seems like so much happens every day. Can't wait to talk to you Tuesday, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and have a great weekend. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, Tommy. You too. Uh, folks, 12 o'clock, every trading day. Check it out, Fast Market. You heard it. And Lululemon as well, right? We you take a look at Broadcom, uh, you jump over to Lululemon, check out their last earnings. Yeah, you jump up from a price point of 319 up to above 360, you make it to 390, and then in the span of about three weeks, you basically give it all back. How about that as you come into earnings, right? You talk about some volatility. That's a daily. You back it up on a three-year weekly, you got to back it up even further, which is remarkable. You got to back things up to more than a three-year chart to now encompass the COVID volatility, which is important on a lot of these charts in terms of an area of support, resistance, even the S&P, right? You back the S&P up, you better believe that's an important area where you accelerated from, where you accelerated from at the lows. That is quite an acceleration, folks, to put it lightly. 2174 to above 4800. We're sitting right now at 4200 for some context here, okay? We are within about the final quarter of a bull run that lasted the better part of 
what, 14 years? I mean, seriously, you back things up. You're talking about missing out on one quarter of action, basically, and you ran higher from a period of 2009 to 2022, so 13 year bull run. And we're sitting within the last three months, but you did have quite a pullback, we'll see where we go. My question to Kevin, talking about the reaction, because my perception, and I love getting his take, he's got so much experience, folks, um, and the team at TD Ameritrade Network, they do a great job. I've learned so much from those programs that Kevin has put together over the years myself. When you look at the type of volatility, in this market, right? And you jump around, whether you're talking about AVGO, Broadcom, 921, up to eight, um, 921, back to 809. I mean, we're gonna have some volatility going forward and that's not going away. And you've seen that on a daily basis and now we got AI in the mix as well. Stay tuned folks, we'll come back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we have the market open basically flat. You get the Dow off 97 right now. Market's barely in the red. NASDAQ 100 off by three. Russell actually in the positive right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we open. Amazon catches a lift up by seven tenths percent. I wonder what they're reading in some of those retail numbers for Amazon in particular. 
in terms of how they may fare. Trading a bit higher, Apple shares trading a bit higher as well. Maybe some Salesforce numbers contributing to Amazon with cloud, et cetera, as well. We jump over to Meta shares up by a percent. Tesla basically flat on the session right now. Got to check in on NVIDIA. Does that put them back? They might be at the trillion. They're really close to that trillion dollar mark. 950 is what they're sitting at right now. NVIDIA shares. Absolutely remarkable, that company. Uh, okay, let's jump around to some of the companies with their numbers. Macy's shares down about 6% on their numbers. We jump over Dollar General with their numbers down 10.9%. You jump over to Nordstrom. Kevin mentioned it, trading higher. Nordstrom up by 9%. Salesforce down 7%, as I mentioned. What else do we got? CrowdStrike. Yeah, CrowdStrike's trading lower by 9.6%. So CrowdStrike, check this out. I got an article pulled up for CrowdStrike. Here we go. It's so tough running a public company, man. And this stock right now is down 9.4%. Okay, they come in with 57 cents a share versus 51. <clears throat> they beat on revenue, <clears throat> excuse me, by more than 15 million. 692 versus 676. The kicker here is that they're only growing at 42% year-over-year revenue. And they were looking, well, they weren't looking, but they were growing at 61% in the prior, in the year-ago quarter, okay? Uh, they swung to a profit compared to a loss, but they're not growing where they are. And when you're buying a growth company, especially probably in this area of business, right, the company offered current quarter guidance $717 million to $724 Consensus was looking for a little bit wider on either side, so they kind of just narrowed it to the middle of the wide range they had. Excuse me. But, yeah, a tough deal for CrowdStrike, so they trade lower. We'll see how the day goes, and we get a little bit of market weakness here. Watch out. So surprising how this goes, man. Uh, I think the market is completely past the Fed, which is astounding because there's definitely some tail risk, and that can always come back into focus potentially. But just walking you through my own method, all, my mentality of things, mentality of things, some really strong words from the vice chair nominee yesterday, right? The, I'd be very surprised it would take a lot in the data to cause me to think that they are going to hike at this point. Doesn't mean they don't come right back, okay? But the market's figured out probably, or at least it's making the wager in its mind, that in the next six months they're going to be done hiking and they're going to pause for a while. Where that falls is not as important as now what's been shifted is to the actual economy and how things shape get shaped going forward. And that's an interesting dichotomy if that completely changes and we're seeing some numbers here. I mean, you look at, right, advanced auto parts out yesterday. These companies have been powerhouses. Now, they have pulled back, okay, but advanced auto parts and forgive me, what's the other one? Somebody in the den helped me out. You guys were helping me out yesterday. Uh, I'll think of it. But they've been powerhouses. And boy, if this is a big indicator, you talk about a breakaway from that channel line, right? Yeah. Be careful today, folks. Market is traded down nine points in a heartbeat. And we have some weakness today. I mean, you look at numbers for Salesforce. Okay, let's get into Salesforce. Down 6.2%. They've traded higher dramatically, but that's quite a pullback on Salesforce on weak numbers in a sector that they should be running hot. AutoZone. Thank you, Peak. Yeah, because this is the one that's really been on. And O'Reilly, thank you. Um, this is the one that's really been on cruise control until their numbers a week ago. Absolute cruise control, right? From 2020, from last year, when we peaked out in the market, this thing was at 2000. We were at 2750 as of May, folks. 2750 as of May. And now, what are you at? You're at 2393. You do catch a little bit of a bounce from the lows. I mean, look at that chart, man. 145 bucks in 2009. You're at 2400 and you made it to 27. But I haven't seen a pullback in these things. I mean, you know, going back years, 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 doing the show with my dad when we were doing it in the morning, I remember we'd pull this thing up and say, you know, it's dicey being in And how I wonder how I would love a fundamental take of somebody in the industry that says to me, why aren't the people at Amazon licking their chops delivering car parts? An area that seems like why are these businesses, these businesses so able to serve the customers and the professionals in that area? When it's an identifiable part that everybody has that most people are looking for the lowest dollar cost, 
but nonetheless, they do it and they've done it and they've gotten it done over and over and over. And so it's been astounding. And that is one of the first really areas of weakness. And it's followed across the board, right? In terms of AutoZone, advanced auto parts. And then you take a look at O'Reilly as well. And we have a little bit of a weakness there. But check out these charts, man. <laughs> look at these charts, right? I mean, the car sector has been something of its own accord. But man, you just remarkable strength. And if you start seeing weakness there, really watch out. And remember where we are in this market. We got a lot of remembers, okay? But it's important to remember tail risk on certain sides. I mean, what's the probability of something occurring? Folks, if it's like 2%, if it's 4%, it's 5%. If you're watching the market every day and something has a 5% chance of hitting, now, you know, you talk about a market pullback. What are the odds we get a real pullback? If you say they're 5%, well, that's a 5% period over months or whatever it is. But keep in mind that 5% chances happen one out of 20 times. If you're a trader and you're trading something, well, let's say you're trading something with a 95% probability of success, you better be planning for that loss, man. You better be planning for that loss where, where you're potentially right, putting up 95% capital. I mean, if you're in an option market and you have a binary trade and you put up 95 to make five, you have a 95% probability in that accord. But guess what? Once a month, you're going to lose that 95 when you were just going for the $5 profit in that type of a scenario. It's important to keep in mind. So when you talk about risks here, we're sitting relatively well at 3,200 in the S&P right now, folks. I mean, I, you want some real context here as we come into this final break? And this one is I try and wrap my own brain around, okay? When Trump came into office, when was it? November of 2016. There's our little tail volatility, okay? When you had some some th lower thrust. So he was in office 2016 to 2020. I have to wrap my brain around this. I wanted to say 2018. Man, time is crazy. Is that right? No, it would have been this volatility, right? No, 2016. Yes. The market was at 2200, folks. Okay. And remember that for the people that gave Trump grief, one of the arguments was, of course, the stock market just keeps going up. He inherited a stock market that is phenomenal at 2,200. We just rose from 6,600 straight line over a period of about eight years to 2,200. Things are amazing. Folks, we are almost double that right now at 4,200, not more than about seven years later, six years later, less than seven years later. No, excuse me, just over seven years later. In context of where we are, dramatic pullbacks, over that time, we have now dealt with a generational pandemic and generational inflation. And we've had 0% interest rates for the better part of 13 years. So there is some tail risk there. And keep that in mind as we sit at 4,200. Markets barely in the red. Stay tuned, folks. Coming back, going over some of the other equities with action today. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. 
New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Markets barely in the red. We got the Dow off about 141 right now. A little bit of volatility. Salesforce in the Dow, so I'm sure that's hitting it. They catch a lift, actually. Um, only down about 4.7%. We jump around to some of the companies. Look at Macy's save itself a bit. You're almost $2 off of that spike low of 11.52. You're trading at 13.26, only down 34 pennies from Macy's. We jump over to Nordstrom's. Man, it's like everything is pairing what it did. Nordstrom's was up at 17. You're now up barely 2%. For Nordstrom, you jump over to CrowdStrike, they've paired the loss as well. Things not as bad or not as good as things first seemed, I guess, in the overnight session as we got CrowdStrike. Still pretty dramatic move, but all things considered, you're just back to where you were literally a week ago in CrowdStrike. At 148, that's where you were trading yesterday, uh, last Thursday, 148, near the open for CrowdStrike. We jump around to the FANG stocks again. Apple is flat. Got to keep your eye on them, man, because they're controlling so much. Microsoft shares are down slightly in the red you jump over to google up by three quarters percent that's a good segue to this article i want to talk about from the journal talking about companies okay business is slowing but companies are juicing their profits businesses may be slowing but measures of earnings management are rising be careful of earnings management check some of this out not getting enough attention i'll post a link to this article in the tiger's den just a couple tidbits because it's uh too long to cover all of it on the air but some of the references, right? Starts off the article, business slowed last year for Google's parent Alphabet. The tech giant still beat earnings expectations in this year's first quarter, in part because it said its computer servers would last longer than expected. The shift reduced its depreciation expense by nearly $1 billion and helped push per share earnings ahead of estimates. So how did they beat? They said, hey, those computers we got, they're going to last longer than we think. We don't need to take that depreciation. Don't worry about that. Saves that money put it to the bottom line, we're crushing it. It's like a clip out of the movie Office Space or something, who knows, man, of a comedy of some sorts. Uh, Google's not alone, though, okay? Yeah, Google spokesperson declined to comment. Not sure what you can really say, right? But more companies are beating analyst expectations and by bigger amounts, Businesses' non-traditional earnings metrics are beating reported earnings by a lot more than last year, and a measure of the likelihood of earnings manipulation is at its highest level in about 40 years. Now, that measure, I'm sure, could be debatable, as that's some type of formula or ratio created by somebody, etc., okay? The moves, which many of which are allowed under accounting rules, nonetheless have detractors. Yeah, not surprising. Right. Uh, Buffett called the practice one of the shames of capitalism. Now, they have to report what they're doing, though, and they have to spe especially report it if it's a material change in their accounting. OK. And this is a report published Thursday. I am not calc bench. 
compared uh, the net income base for accounting standards for 200 randomly selected companies in the S&P 500. Okay, the adjusted numbers were higher by $1.1 billion on average last year, an increase of more than 130% over a similar sample in terms of tweaking the numbers. And this is what they talk about. Another, this is the one I've heard of. Uh, um, Benaish M. Score, some professor from Indiana. Uh, and what they do is they take a look of a number of components of what they're doing, okay? And, and then some of them are red flags to manipulation in earnings. And it can even point to fraud if it's that bad in some of these, okay? But check out some of the other action in here. Google comes up again. So Google came into 2023 in a cold streak, having missed analyst consensus for earnings in every quarter of the last year. So in April, the company broke the trend despite a continued slowdown in the company's ad sales. They beat by $1.17 over $1.08. The company's filings noted two material changes. They noted it, so it's legit, it's not illegal that helped boost the bottom line. First, the company revised its estimate for the servers that I told you about, okay, saying they'd last up to six years instead of four. The change, the second such extension in two years added six cents a share alone. That alone added six pennies, which is basically what they beat, okay? Separately, the company said it was shifting its stop compensation awards for employees from January to March, resulting in the company recognizing less expense in the first quarter relative to the rest of the year. I mean, that's just straight up manipulation of the numbers. It's going to come to roost at some point. And so that's not real beats. And so you got to be careful, man. Um, yeah. For what it's worth, and 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 Google, well, I mean, they, you, I could spend the whole time. I'm going to post this in the Tiger's Den, folks, because there's many examples in terms of what they do. Uh, highly suspect, yeah, in terms of that's an accounting professor at Brigham Young University. Actual performance hasn't changed. You're just changing the allocation of the cost. Carvana, they did similar stuff in here, okay? Adjusted gross profit per car sold came in at 4100 to 4400 They beat by only losing about 51. One reason they jumped was because it unwound $51 million in charges it made the previous quarter. The company took the charges because it expected to sell cars in its inventory for less than it had once expected, but was then able to sell them for more as you cars appreciated. Unwinding the allowances boosted by 48 cents. Nearly all of the company's beat. So there's tweaking going on everywhere in that market. So be careful, yeah, to put it lightly. Google shares today though, they're up by a percent. And if you can solve the problem, folks, of who's going to win out, the battle that Google is about to lose their monopoly in search or the battle that YouTube is taking over our eyeball viewing times, folks. There's nothing like YouTube. I'm convinced of it. I wish they were a standalone like Netflix. I would buy the equity and hold it for my kids forever. But unfortunately, if you want to buy YouTube, you have to buy Google. And Google is really facing some tough go-aheads as they are in the midst of losing a monopoly on internet search, which you can't overstate that one. We jump over to their competitor that's taken some of their lunch, Microsoft, down about a tenth of a percent, almost got it all back, right? This is the stuff I talk about, man, right near all-time highs from Microsoft. Apple was within claw and distance as well, basically flat on the session. Check in on Dollar General. That's quite a weekly, man. Down 33 bucks, down almost 17%. We jump over to a longer-term chart on this equity. Boy, watch out, man. Watch out indeed. You're back to pre-COVID level, man. Just like that. It's going to be tough for them to make money. Down 17%. Look at Nordstrom. Give it all back. Look at these companies, man. Look at this reaction as the market opens. See how CrowdStrike's doing. CrowdStrike calling it back. Macy shares down about 2.9%. Let's jump over to some of the other streamers. Netflix shares up about 1.2% right now. Disney cannot find a bid, man. Down 8 tenths percent for Disney shares at 87.20. We jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery, down about 2.5%. Let's see how the dollar's trading this morning. Dollar trading lower. We got 103.88. You jump over to the 10-year yield, up 9 ticks, somewhat hanging out where we were right now. Jump over to the euro, euro US dollar right now, 107.23. As you get the S&Ps up about, excuse me, down about 9 points. We jump over to the VIX. Let's see how we're trading. Relatively muted VIX right now, 1725. We've got a jobs number tomorrow, man. And as we come into that, as we come into this break, 
Private payrolls, 278,000 in May, well ahead of expectations. The market was looking for 180. This number can differ greatly from the non-farm payroll that we get tomorrow morning. But still, pretty remarkable where the conversation is right now. Inflation, especially core, especially that core PCE number, right near 5%. We're adding hundreds of thousands of jobs a month. Unemployment at 3.5%. We got wage growth as well. And it seems like the Fed is going to skip slash pause coming up in less than two weeks. But hey, we get some data tomorrow. We get some data today. We'll go over Lululemon when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps down about nine points right now. Make it 10 points, trading at 41.80. We have highs up there around the 42.40 range. If you're looking for a Fibonacci retracement from where we were at the lows of last Wednesday, right, you're coming right into that 50% area. If you're looking for a bounce, uh, the 618 also around about 41.61. We're trading right now down about 10 points on the session right across the board. When you take a look, folks, the Market Watch tab. And the Thinkorswim platform allows you to really examine in terms of what is up, what is down, in terms of a heat map style. If it's green, it's obviously in the green. The brighter it is green, the more it's up. You jump over to the Dow, for an example. Oh, what's going on? This was just green. How'd that happen? Oh, no, Salesforce. Yes, Salesforce down 6.3%. You can see bright red, of course, sticking out. We got Amgen 
off 3.4 percent let's jump over to amgen before we jump over to lulu real quick yeah there's a drop for you man they got some news i guess amgen off 3.6 percent right now salesforce down 5.6 percent what i was going to say is so the the dow's really taking it right they're in the negative you jump over to the nasdaq 100 boy nvidia yeah they're up two percent google's up a bit we touched on meta's up a bit as well everything else barely in the red you got barely biogen's up 1.6 percent a few in there you jump over to the s p 500 not a lot of green spots out of 500 in that chart. NVIDIA, Google, Meta, Netflix really jump out as some of the big equities. But right across the board, man, um, not many bright green equities that would be in the green as well. We jump over to Lulu. Lulu, with their numbers after the bell tonight, quite a slide, man. Right? Check it out. We put this thing on a daily. You just traded from 390 to 330. I talked about you gave back the entire basic gap. Maybe that's where you trade down to uh, tonight after the bell. Now, what's interesting here is... Athleisure's never going away, man, okay? And Nordstrom, which I was going to say in the premium sector, fared pretty well, but they just gave almost it all back. So maybe expectations were a little bit too high, and that's the tough part you want to consider here. Now, you just gave back a tremendous amount, but still, maybe all that optimism not really deserved. You see those numbers, 330 for Lulu, and you're talking about a move of $25 priced in for their earnings tonight after the bell in either direction. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman did his program live at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to come back for the 10 o'clock update. We're going to have Basil's program from 8 in the morning that he did, so that is current. We'll have live programming after that, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.